Good morning! So it is about um, 6.30. I usually leave between like 6.45, 6.50 to go to school, but I need to go a little earlier because I didn't finish everything that I needed to get done yesterday. I need to input my students' grades from their quizzes last week and then um, do some solutions for their worksheet for today. Should be able to get it done in time. But um, I have today prepping for our class for Wednesday as well as a new book club. So I'll share more about that later. I was invited to a book club by engineering. And so it's the first meeting that I'll be able to go to. All right, so let's get started with today. All right, just sharing my outfit of the day. So I'm wearing this like chambray tank kind of top tucked into these Madewell cropped flared pants. All right, so I am in my office. I just prepped for class. It is 7.46, my class is at eight. It's just downstairs. So things I did as soon as I got to my office was write out my to-do list. So let me show you what my to-do list looked like. All right, so I put a little line here to represent these are the things I need to get done before class and then these are the things I can do later. So I post the announcements in my class. So online in my class I always post the announcements, the things I need to know for the day here. So here are the announcements I posted for the day and then I needed to post some grades and set up groups in my class. I was kind of running behind schedule today, so I didn't have time to like thoughtfully do my groups, so I just did them randomly. But what I like to do since my class is in the same building as my office, before my students even get there, and because I teach at 8 a.m., I run down and I post these name cards. So I made my I had my students create name tents on the first day of class with their name and their pronouns, just because we do group work every day and they need to be able to address each other and talk to each other every day. So what I've decided to do was actually pre- um, make my groups and put the name tents down before my students even get there because I've noticed in the past that my students waste so much valuable time just by like getting up and moving to their groups and I also don't have to like write the groups up on the board it's just done before class so as soon as they come in they just go and sit at their name tent and I teach in the same class three classes in a row so once my first class leaves I put out the tents for the second class and so on so I could do that this semester because I'm teaching in the same classroom back to back to back. Also, I assign groups on Monday and Wednesday and on Friday they're free to sit wherever they want. That's also the day where I give a quiz so there's less time for them to work on their groups. So I did the groups and then the last thing that I didn't really do, I like to rewrite the solutions for the worksheet they're going to do today just so I'm familiar with like the pitfalls. I didn't have time for that so I just printed out the solutions that I had made last semester and I'll rewrite the solutions after class today for them. Um, but yeah, I am, let me show you what I bring to class class so you can see all the things I prepared so my class is flipped so my students have watched video lectures and so in class they just ask me questions and then practice problems in groups okay so this is what I bring to class every single day so I always do the to-do list which I write on the board and also the announcements which I also write on the board and then in this um, questions and recap section I always have a plan of things that I want to talk about in case they don't have questions they typically don't but I think today's um, lesson was a little tricky um, quadratic optimization so I think that they will have some questions for me so I'm just going to do this example that they had in their pre-class assignment. I'm also returning the quiz that they took on Friday so I've set up some time at the end of class to go over it and these are the things that I noticed that they struggled with so these are the things I'm going to go over at the end of class and then I also found that when students present things on the board they do so much better. I think this is actually number three. Um, they do so much better when they're tested on and assessed. So I'm going to have some groups write up number 1A, some groups write up number 1C, and then some groups write up number 3. So we can have examples of these on the board. So we have about 10 minutes, so I think this is a good time for me to go down because I have, like, I have to write some things on the board and stuff. So I'm about to head down to class, and then I will see you again at 11 because I'm actually done teaching for the day at 11 when most people are just getting started. So that's really nice. All right. Bye. All right. So it is now 2.37 and I've literally been doing stuff 
since I got out of class at 11. So I had a quick little lunch. I had like a turkey sandwich. Didn't even get to eat all my lunch because I had to meet with the course coordinator for the online course that I'm teaching. So I'm teaching three classes of pre-calculus face-to-face and one is online. And so this is my first time teaching an online class. And it's fine. We do these like online study sessions and I don't mind doing those. Those are great. I just don't really like that I have to be like on call kind of. I can get like emails from the students, especially if this technology isn't working. Anyway, I got an email. Uh, well, we because we the reason we were meeting is because um, it's test time and the students have to register online for their test and the registration web page just was not working. Basically IT didn't set us up but it was chaos. And then I got an email from a student who said that he he added my class late during drop ad and asked if I could extend his homework assignments. It is September 9th. <laughs> drop ad was August 20th. He had done zero assignments and test one is in two days and, and we have a policy that we can grant extensions up to 48 hours after it's due and the most recent assignment was like more than 48 hours ago so I told the student that I think it would be in his best interest to just retake the class next semester but face to face so that you have like someone working with you daily as well as your class would only have 19 students in it because we have a small class size initiative. But anyway, after that, I came back to my office and I worked on my solutions. So let me show you. So I have solutions for the worksheet my students did today. And then I also got to do the solutions for the worksheet that my students will do on Wednesday. So it's a problem solving day. Then I had a student come to office hours. So I was doing the solutions while my student was like doing some work. I have like an extra table over here. So she was working. And then when she had questions, she would come back and ask me. And then I have been reading. I have not quite finished the chapter for the book club. I think I have like three more pages to read. Um, but I was also reading for the book club and like taking some notes. So this section is all about what makes students motivated uh, to actually learn in your class. And it's, it's pretty intense, but I think a good summary, what I put in my notes here, um, how perceptions of the environment affect interaction of value and uh, expectancy. So basically these three things have to line up for students to have a high motivation for your class. The goal for your class has to be valued for the student. Um, the expect expectancies for success should be positive. So they should believe that they can do it. And then also the environment perceived um, so should be supportive. And so if they feel support in the class from the instructor and the other students, then if you have all three of these, then that's when the motivation for your class will be highest. I have to walk all the way up a hill to engineering. Um, so I may take you along with me on that journey and then I'll let you know how the book club goes. So they have met last semester and read the first two chapters of the book. I'm jumping in this semester with chapter three. So yeah, I'm starting to get a little tired, but the day is almost over. Um, so I'm gonna scan these solutions and have a little snack and then go to the book club. Here's my snack. Um, these Hillshire small plates, they're like charcuterie boards, but delicious. And a nice little quick snack before my meeting that I have to leave for, or the book club that I have to leave for in 15 minutes. All right, so I am hot and sweaty, but I'm back from the book club meeting. It was actually really good. We shared a lot of ideas about our teaching and things we're doing in our classrooms and stuff. So it was really nice to talk about that with people who are outside of the math department. So it went really well. Also, there was food there and I didn't realize there would be food. So that was great. Um, so what I'm about to do is scan my solutions and post one of them. And then I have to reply to an email for a student. And then I'm going to head home and have some dinner. And then I have dance tonight. So this one was a day in the life of a college professor. I will post some other day in the life videos maybe up here and here and if you enjoy this content consider subscribing and I will talk to you next time. Bye!